Hello everyone, this is Doc Severson with episode 7 of the Ready, Set, Crypto podcast. Today's topic is another tale of the tape, where I discuss some of the more personal elements of trading. Those being the challenges of trading financial markets that we all share since we're human. If it were easy, then it's something that you could pick up on the shelf at Walmart or Tesco and everyone would have perfect and positive portfolios. Well, it's not that easy. It's very difficult to separate yourself from the pack, especially in a bear market. I'm just like every other retail trader out there. I came into the world of trading thinking that trading financial markets was fun and easy and exciting. Well, one out of three ain't bad, as it's certainly an exciting profession. But it's never been easy for me to make a living at this, and the fun comes in only at the end of a long road that's littered with self-doubt, setbacks, and challenges that you eventually overcome if you have the right approach, and if you're humble enough to understand that the market isn't here to fulfill your wishes. It's quite the opposite, actually. To that end, today's topic is about starting over again. If you're like many, your first exposure to financial markets might have looked fun to begin with, especially in the final stages of a bull market where everyone's a genius. It's so easy, right? Just buy anything and it goes higher. The euphoria and fear of missing out causes the greed to kick in, and before you know it, you're borrowing money from your grandmother to increase your account leverage. Well, I think we all know how this turns out, and for many of you, you're still dealing with the consequences. So what do you do from here? How do you start all over again? Many just quit muttering about Ponzi schemes and scams and things that they don't really understand. They're looking for a scapegoat, and they're easy to find. Folks like this are looking for a sure thing and they don't understand that in order to seek reward, there must be an element of risk. No risk, no reward. Now, I never went into trading financial markets thinking about psychology. In fact, I'd read all of those preachy articles about trading psychology and just brushed them aside, preferring to concentrate on strategies and charts and indicators. Many of you are in the same place and probably wondering, when I'll get to the good stuff like that. Folks, understanding trading psychology is the good stuff. I would say it's probably responsible for over 90% of your eventual success, perhaps even more. You'll come to find that the basic blocking and tackling of trading is fairly simple. The strategies, the charts, the setups, the portfolios, etc. What's much more difficult is to manage the space between your ears and not become part of the manipulated investing herd. To that end, I'm gonna borrow something used in the therapy field and apply it to trading. It's the seven stages of grief, or the modified Kubler-Ross model. You might have heard this model applied to someone if they're suffering through the loss of a loved one or hearing a crushing medical diagnosis for the first time. Now, before any of you get sensitive on me, let me first affirm that the grief experienced by the loss of capital in a trading account in no way compares to the loss of a loved one or hearing a terminal diagnosis. But it sure does feel bad to blow out an account, so that's what we're gonna focus on today. So how can this model help us to understand what happens to us when we experience financial loss? And we have to consider how to get back on the horse and get started again. Let's walk through the stages and see how they fit. Stage one is shock. Everything's been going along just great when all of a sudden your coin or portfolio gets dumped on. If you hold financial assets sooner or later, it's gonna happen. And chances are, you are like every other retail trader in that you placed far too much capital on one position without identifying what your stops were ahead of time. The shock and awe of stage one wears off quickly, and you move into stage two, which is denial. This is where you search the internet high and low for confirmation that the dip will be bought. Eventually, you'll find enough Reddit posts that confirm this bias, which pacifies you just long enough to see the next swing down. The denial is replaced by reality and soon leads to the third stage, which is anger. You're angry at everyone else, the pundits that whipped up the FOMO, 
the hodlers that spoon-fed you their religion about that coin or project, that newsletter guy that insisted that your coin would moon this year. Your fingers are so busy pointing at everyone else, you don't notice that your thumbs are pointing back at you. No trades were executed by anyone else. They were all your work, but you're really not ready to hear that point yet. Eventually, the anger dissipates into the fourth stage, which is bargaining. You're going to try to find a way out of this situation. Sometimes traders try to work their magic with the broker and insist that the broker did not honor a stop loss. But there's no audit trail to prove that. Sometimes traders will get the bright idea to buy more at a lower price and try to double down on their position. But there's no short-term gratification in that and the market laughs at your puny attempts by going lower still. You get points here for creativity, but in the end, there is no relief. And that leads to the next stage, which is depression. Nothing is working. The optimism and sheer joy that you felt just weeks ago has been replaced by fatalistic resignation that your life has not been changed and you have to punch the clock of the salt mines again tomorrow. Your dreams of trading from a hammock on a beach have been dashed. You are now realizing the inevitable that your funds are probably gone for now. And quite honestly, this is where most people quit. They sell out whatever they have left in the market with some parting shots and are unlikely to ever return. Or if they do, they will not return into the market until everything is mooning again where they can repeat the same mistakes as before. If you're listening to this, then you might be at a similar decision point. Do you give up and quit, or do you find a way to make this work? Nearly every successful professional trader that I've met has met their own make or break points like this. I've had a few of my own over the years where I peered over the edge into the abyss, didn't like what I saw, and decided to do something about it. One of the quotes that has stuck with me over the years and has kept me pointed into the wind has been a speech that Winston Churchill gave it is alma mater, the Harrow School, in October of 1941. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. If you take the attitude that you will never give in, no matter what, then how can you be stopped? At the very end of that commencement address, not part of this recording, is his statement, We now find ourselves in a position where I say that we can be sure that we have only to persevere to conquer. Look, whether you want to admit it or not, no financial market is your friend. It is war. If you doubt that, then you haven't seen a live trading pit. Yes, they're becoming extinct, and the majority of trading is done electronically now, but that doesn't mean that the battles are any less intense. Financial markets are a form of warfare, and you have to figure out whether or not you want to get into the battle or stay in the rear echelon like everyone else and just talk about it. Your first encounter perhaps did not go the way that you expected it to. I say, join the club with the rest of us. Many people don't realize how close to success that they were right up to the point where they quit. If you quit, how can you ever be successful? You have only to persevere to conquer. Those that do not quit, those that realize that they might have been outmatched and ill-prepared for their first battle with the market, will make it to stage six, which is the testing stage of the Kubler-Ross model. They'll start to dig and find answers. They realize that financial markets are devious vehicles meant to take every penny of your money if you think like the rest of the herd. You start to study professional approaches and tactics. You realize the skill gap that you must fill before you can hope to have any long-term, consistent success at this venture. And those with a proper motivation will make it to stage seven, which is acceptance. You've now accepted your loss and you understand why. You've accepted the fact that you were not prepared and outmatched in battle. You've accepted the fact that you need to upgrade your skill set and take a more professional approach next time. 
You no longer feel grief, but more of a sense of determined calm that you know what to do next time. Can you now see how we can apply a psychological grief model to explain the world of investing? Quite honestly, for as long as I've been helping others, everyone has exactly the same issues and follows the same journey to become a more effective professional investor. If you haven't listened to it yet, find my podcast episode two for the 10 stages of investor development. So let's get back to square one and address the original question for this episode. How do you start all over again? First off, you must have the desire to get back into the arena and do it right this time. Secondly, you will repeat the same mistakes that you made the first time unless you take the time to dig and find out exactly what you did wrong the first time around. I'll give you a hint. If you're like 99% of other investors, it probably had something to do with the top two mistakes that I see everyone make, which is first, to place too much capital into one position, and secondly, not to identify an exit for that position before you enter. The next thing from there you need to tackle is to define your approach. Most don't have any sense of how to create a professional approach to investing. By defining their path through a business plan and a trading plan, are they an investor with a longer time horizon or a trader that is just looking to jump on a quick swing? In addition, I'm an advocate of simplifying things when it comes to investing in markets. Most folks think that they need to diversify into dozens of coins or tokens using several different strategies. My preference is that you keep it simple, otherwise you'll end up as a jack of all trades and a master of none. Follow Curly's Law and find your one thing. You know, some of you are gonna hear this episode and this will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. The final trigger that makes you yell out, who the hell wants to do all that? Why does it need to be so difficult? Why can't this be easy? No thanks doc, I'm out of here. Well, if that's your mindset, then I'm actually helping you make a tough decision because quite honestly, there are no simple, easy decisions to make with crypto investing. If someone tells you otherwise, then run far, far away. It might not be a good idea for you to restart because the probabilities are very high that you'll have the same exact outcome the next time. And you know what they say about the definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So there you go. It's not that hard to get started again. You just need to persevere to conquer and do it the right way this time. And folks, if you need any assistance with coming up with your own plan, please reach out to Mav or myself at ReadySetCrypto.com. Thanks for listening, folks. I'll see you in the next podcast. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for sticking around. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and absolutely check out the other videos we've got on this channel. We've put a lot of work into doing cryptocurrency education the right way. And as such, we've set up a website with a free daily newsletter, a free ebook, and a free two-hour intro course, all accessible at readysetcrypto.com. Check us out, and thanks so much for watching. Cheers.